In this module, we'll talk about care and maintenance of your ultrasound machine as well as infection control. I'm Dr. Ted Kuhn. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how to maintain your ultrasound machine. It doesn't matter how good a sonography you are, if your machine is broken, you're not going to be able to do an ultrasound. We also ought to take uh, special attention to protect ourselves and our patients from infection. You'll learn both of these things in this module, so let's start now. Ultrasound machines are quite similar to cars. On one side you see an old car, and on the other side you see a brand new car. Now whether you paid a lot or a little, or whether you have a simple car, or a very, very fancy car, the car isn't going to go very far unless you have tires. It's actually the tires, maybe some of the least expensive part of a car, that actually hits the ground and makes it go. Well, ultrasound machines are very similar. Whether you have an old machine or a new machine, whether you paid a little bit of money or a whole lot of money and have the fanciest ultrasound machine possible, you can't see anything and you can't make the diagnosis unless the screen is clean and you have clear vision of the screen. While the eye does not see what the mind does not know, it is also true that the eye does not see what the eye does not see. And if your ultrasound machine is clouded with fingerprints or dirt, you're going to have a trouble making a diagnosis, whether you have an old machine or a new machine, an inexpensive machine, or a very expensive machine. And what you see in this picture is actually the ultrasound machine that I use in the emergency department. I've been gone for several days, and if you look carefully, you see that there are fingerprints all over the machine. Now, I didn't do this on purpose. This is the way I find it almost every time I go to work. Now, if you take a little bit of a closer look, you see uh, a screen that is very dirty and very disturbing. Who would want to do an ultrasound and try to make a diagnosis with a screen that looks like this? So the first thing we'll talk about, and we'll start here, is how to clean the screen. So what you see here is a commercial screen cleaner. You can buy these in any store uh, that sells office supplies. I've also sometimes used the little cleaner packets that you use to clean glasses with. There is a simpler and perhaps better way to clean the screen and the ultrasound machine itself. This is a drawer in one of the patient rooms in our emergency department and you see all nicely rolled up there are towels and also to the side if you look carefully there are washcloths. This is a low-tech but very easy and simple and effective way not only to clean the screen but to clean your ultrasound machine before you use it. You can just take a clean washcloth and run it under the water warm water works well and just one end of it and uh, squeeze it so the water is out of it and then you can use that to wipe off the screen and the rest of the ultrasound machine. I flip the washcloth over then and use the dry part to dry off the screen. It works incredibly well. Don't use paper towels. They can actually scratch the screen. Here you see a video of washing the keyboard. And lastly, of course, just wipe off the probes. And we'll talk a lot more later about how to appropriately clean the probes, but certainly that's a start. I'll also remind you to clean the gel. I don't know of anything else on the ultrasound machine that's probably as dirty as the gel because everyone puts their hand on the gel after they put their hands on the patient. The CDC has provided guidelines for us on the care and cleaning of all of our probes and there are really two different levels of disinfection. Uh, the first is with external probes that only come in contact with clean intact skin. They are considered non-critical devices and require cleaning after every use. However, they don't require disinfection. Cleaning of external probes is accomplished by taking the probe off of the machine and washing it with warm soapy water. Uh, hand soap will do, as well as a dish washing uh, detergent or liquid. And then the probe is cleaned with a dry towel or a washcloth and can be returned to service immediately. All internal probes or probes that have been contaminated with blood or body fluids need to be disinfected. The first thing one should do is to take off the probe cover if a probe cover is being used, which it should be if it's uh, in contact with blood. Wash it off in the sink just like you would do with the external probes with warm soapy water and dry it. This actually removes a large number of microbes. Then the probe itself has to be disinfected. There are several compounds that can be used and your hospital probably has a list of what they use. In our emergency department, glutaraldehyde is used but also other common agents would be hypochlorite solution as well as chlorhexidine glucidate. 
The healthcare provider should also be cognizant to protect himself or herself uh, from contamination and use gloves throughout the entire cleaning and disinfection procedure. Here's the appropriate way to clean a probe. You can see I'm taking some of the hand soap, which contains chlorhexidine. I'm washing them with my hands. And this probe has been used on a patient with clean intact skin. That's warm water. I wash off the tip of the probe, clean it off with a washcloth so as not to damage the tip of the probe, and also clean the cord off about halfway down. You'll also see where two pieces of plastic come together, and that's where the probe is waterproof below that notch. Now before each shift, and certainly once or twice during the shift, I will also wipe the machine down with a disinfectant towelette. This is after the machine has been cleaned with warm water and the probes have already been cleaned uh, with soap and water. These towelettes uh, have disinfectant and uh, they will kill any bacteria that's been left on uh, after the probe has been cleaned. Now you notice here that I'm using the disinfectant without gloves on. I apologize for that. Gloves should be worn during the entirety of this procedure. I also would encourage you to clean the cords and of course one of the most dirty part of the machines which is that bottle of gel which everybody touches after they've touched a patient. While I know this is controversial from a universal precautions perspective, I sometimes will recommend that we glove our right hand and wrap the probe around it as shown and use that hand for touching the patient. Uh, and leave the other hand, the left hand, ungloved so that we can touch the machine. That way we can keep ourselves from cross-contaminating the machine uh, with patients' uh, blood and body fluids. You should always put a probe cover on your vaginal probe before you use the probe. Uh, we have probe covers available and condoms may also be substituted for this. Actually, condoms are stronger. Fill the appropriate side of the probe cover with ultrasound gel and put it over the top of the probe making sure that there are no bubbles in the ultrasound gel. Now I like to put a rubber band around the base of the vaginal probe. It's very embarrassing after your exam if you're busy uh, and you pull the probe out of the vagina and leave what looks like a condom in the vagina for her to discover her or significant other to discover later. Once done with your exam, remove the probe and wash it with soap and water as described previously. We also use these uh, transvaginal probes for other purposes. They are truly intracavitary probes. Here's an example of one other use. Uh, I'm using the uh, transcavitary probe to examine a child for a peritonsillar abscess and I think we would all agree that uh, if we're going to use it for this purpose that you want that probe as clean and disinfected as possible. A couple of thoughts on protecting your machine. The probes themselves can be broken if dropped, and care must be taken not to drop the probes. The cords also are very sensitive and can be damaged if you tramp on them with your feet or if you roll over them with the ultrasound machine. The ultrasound machines weigh several hundred pounds, and that weight is enough to cause damage to the cords. Here are two examples of machines with cords that are under the wheels. Now, neither of these machines rolled over the cords because I was there to extract the cord from the wheels, but it's very easy to roll over these cords and damage the probes. The probes themselves can cost anywhere from two or three thousand dollars to fifteen to twenty thousand dollars and need to be replaced if they're damaged. The best way to keep from running over the probe cords is just to keep the cords up on the top of the machine. Before you move the machine, check the location of your cords and, as shown in the video, uh, hang them up. Some of the newer machines actually have skirts on the bottom to keep the probes from hitting the floor, but our machines at this point don't have that, and all cords should be uh, thoroughly secured before moving a machine. You'll find that it's very easy to drop the cords sometimes doing exams. Therefore, I recommend this technique, which is to wrap the cord uh, once around your wrist while you're scanning. That way, if you inadvertently drop the probe, it'll hang from your wrist and not hit the floor. I would also encourage you never to lay a probe on the bed. If the bed is empty, someone will come and move the ultrasound machine and knock the probe on the floor. If the bed actually has a patient in it, 
uh, during an exam, that patient will change positions and roll over and also knock the probe on the floor. When the probe hits the floor, there's a high likelihood that it'll be damaged and has to be replaced. And as mentioned previously, these probes are extremely expensive uh, and sensitive. In this module, we have reviewed and discussed how to maintain and clean your ultrasound machine. We've talked about the probes and how to protect them from breaking, about how to clean the screen. We've also talked about how to clean your probes and protect yourself and your patients from infection. Thank you very much for this module. This is Dr. Ted King. Mm -hmm.